Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, October 20th, 2015 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. All selectmen are here this evening with the exception of Selectman Semino. Our first item on the agenda is 6.30 p.m. Fiscal year 2017 budget introduction. Brian Ballantyne, Finance Director. Mr. Purple. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Um, so this uh, kind of officially kicks off our budget season. If you recall, last year when we um, uh, began about this same time and did something similar to this, just to make sure that a lot of the issues and things we were taking a look at is, of course, as a, uh, as a matter of the budget process um, out on the table early and often. Um, you know, the intention tonight is not to get into a whole lot of detail on a lot of things um, with some of these initiatives. Um, I do want to um, uh, present them to you tonight so that you've got an idea if there's something that the board really is not interested in moving forward in the budget process with. We'd like to know that so that we don't spend the next four or five months working on it, um, only to find at the end that it's not something we're going to move to town meeting. If there are additional things that the board is interested in, we'd like to hear those things this evening uh, to be able to uh, give us some ideas as to other things to look at. Um, some of the things that Brian is going to go over in terms of uh, FY17 initiatives, um, they are uh, at this point uh, conceptual. Um, it may be that we have an idea, a thing that we want to look at. We're not quite sure how we want to do it yet. Um, so, you know, as I said, not a whole lot of detail. Um, I do appreciate the department heads that are here this evening. Um, most of them uh, have uh, something that may be included um, uh, as, as an initiative for the next year, uh, or they just want to make sure that we, um, we don't do anything to them this early in the budget process. So I'm not sure which. But I will turn it over to uh, Finance Director Brian Ballantyne. Uh, Town Accountant Heidi Krieger is here in case you have any intricate detailed questions on the receipts. Um, and uh, with that... Where you go. And Brian, before you start, I just want to thank you for the materials that you submitted in advance of the meeting. They were posted online. Everyone, to the extent anyone had any interest, they could uh, review them, and I thought they were uh, comprehensive and uh, straightforward. And with that preface, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Um, as uh, the town administrator said, I have Heidi here with me to um, do any assisting that may be necessary. There might not be any, but this is uh, something we did last year, um, and it seemed to be uh, helpful to the board. Look at a few things that we're thinking about, um, that the department heads are thinking about. Just note that, again, this is kind of a treetop level early blush at the at the 17 budget, and, um, you know, certainly things could change. This is mid-October. Um, it's still going to almost be 70 degrees Thursday, so... We still have a little ways to go, but um, as you know, as a quick reminder, the budgets are coming in now. Uh, Maureen um, in the Selectman's office has been receiving them. Uh, we've already put out our paperwork, so the department heads are working on them. Some have been um, already received, and it's, so it's ongoing as we speak. So uh, as you may be aware, in November, um, hopefully they'll all be collected, and um, the usual procedure after that will be to review them and, and talk about them and, and go from there. And that's when we'll get into the real detailed conversations. So just a, just quick, this isn't a very long slideshow, um, but uh, we'll start with fiscal 2015, which just ended. Um, the annual audit is, is undergoing right now. In fact, the auditors are in. Uh, it's nearing completion. Again, we are not uh, finding any major issues which is always good for a community to hear. So let's hope that uh, none are found. Um, we achieved all our revenue projections for fiscal 15, uh, actually ex exceeded all our revenue projections, which is good news. Um, however, our free cash, which was certified at 1.1, a little over $1.1 million, was uh, a decrease of about 400,000 from the previous year. And as you know, if you think back, there's a couple of reasons for that. The snow was, was one of them. Um, and um, there were a couple of other various reasons that the revenues, even though they were above our projections, they weren't as robust as the year before. And uh, the last reason, the major reason, is uh, a lot of the departments or, um, or uh, you know, spent their allotted budget this year. Some years we do have cases where the departmental budgets come in, and, and some of the large ones, especially public safety or DPW or benefits, 
can have substantial balances depending on what happens and, and this year that did not happen. Pretty much all the departmental budgets were spent down. So the uh, at town meeting in 2015, uh, five months ago or so, uh, we finished with an estimated 2.2 million levy capacity which was pretty, um, pretty high. Um, Fiscal 15 continued. Some balances, uh, just a note at the end of uh, June. So our post-employment fund that we began a few years ago um, and we are now uh, dedicated to funding annually uh, is about 336,000 with another 250,000 that we did add uh, per the town meeting in April. Stabilization fund, again, we actually got a little more money in there. So uh, that was 445 and again, um, added about 90,000 there. And the CPC fund, of course these are all special funds, um, 1.4 million, although that's a little misleading. It's kind of a running cash balance against projects that are um, committed. Um, so 540,000 of that is, is sort of committed to uh, projects that were already approved. Um, so we'll take that to note. 16 issues and comments. Uh, we are in 16. Uh, the it's it's an early it's it's early yet but the the couple of things that we came up with with the the North Borough South Borough obvious legal issue that we we uh, went through for a while thankfully settled and as you know that went through the last town meetings uh, the last town meeting excuse me and seven annual payments remain on that agreement um, the minimum contribution formula was tweaked uh, when the final state aid uh, budget was released um, earlier in the year and um, that affected our assessment for Algonquin unfortunately uh, the assessments are roughly a thirty three thousand dollars short um, in the scheme of things it's not a huge amount of money but it is an issue that needs to be addressed so for uh, the next town meeting we will have a transfer to cover that uh, pending deficit um, and we identified it in the Norfolk agricultural uh, assessment budget or tuition budget. As you know, we sometimes have to budget that for uh, possible students, but we did not have any this year. So I believe it was about 50, 50 to 55,000 in that uh, budget that's available. Quarter one of the fiscal year is complete. Um, however, the revenues are, um, many of the revenues are seasonal, excise tax being one that's very, um, uh, you know, most of the revenue comes in after February. Um, a lot of them uh, tend to run like that, so we can't, we don't have a complete picture on where we stand on that, but we will, probably two to three months out, we'll, we'll start to get a better view of that. The reserve fund was used already. Um, it's one thing we want to watch. Uh, facilities and youth and family did have um, some, some commitments they uh, asked the uh, advisory committee for and they were granted so about 92,000 remains for fiscal 16 um, again we'll have to watch that see how the winter is and um, as time goes on we'll update the board on that the assessor's office is completing uh, the reval that they are required every three years it's actually complete now I shouldn't say they are completing it is complete so it was a big project for the assessor's office it's 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 not an easy thing and um, that's that's great that they got that done. So the new initiatives for fis fiscal 17, um, here they are. Now again, these may change a little bit, get tweaked. There could even be something that comes up that we don't have on here. However, this is our first uh, sort of um, blush at what might, what might come through the budgets to give you an idea. So uh, there's various departments listed here. The library, additional page hours, um, and they eliminated one position. So there's a little bit of a reorganization there. You'll hear more about that during, during the uh, budget season with the library. Uh, formalizing a human resources position. Again, not sure where, where, how that may fit into our organizational structure quite yet. Um, it's something uh, the town administrator and myself think that uh, the town might be ready for, but uh, uh, and as is bullet three, uh, full-time IT director. We've talked to the, about this before. Uh, the, the town was hoping to find a part-time um, IT resource person for, for, for the uh, town hall in various locations. Have not been able to do that yet. We may or may not bring this forward depending on what happens the rest of the year. Um, 
the police uh, department. <coughs> Two new full-time officers may be requested through the budget process. So uh, obviously safety is, it will be an issue and will be talked about during that um, option. Uh, some fire training, uh, that's pretty straightforward. DPW, uh, some change in a staff engineer position. Um, the, the department may change the way it processes uh, uh, transfer stickers. It's a pretty intensive administrative process that um, the, t the uh, DPW director and myself have been looking at and we're hoping to maybe streamline. And a new full-time employee for the transfer station. Uh, disposition of Fayetteville Hall, as you know, uh, cable will be out of that building uh, eventually and um, that, that will leave one department with two employees may not be the most uh, efficient um, utilization of some resources, so we're gonna look at that. Conservation Commission, increase in maintenance funds for the Breakneck Hill due to the dissolution of the cow fund. I think we've all heard about that issue, and, and um, they may, the, the commission may or may not uh, need to come up with some budget funding in the area of 2500 to $5,000 next year. Uh, for some of that maintenance. Uh, again, that may not happen. Uh, I'm hearing that they may find some other resources, but we'll see. And the youth and family, some program coordinator hours for administrative responsibilities, which um, the director has uh, briefed the advisory committee on before and um, has been in consultation with the town administrator and myself, so that should be coming down the road to discuss also. So, fiscal 17, other notes. No surprise we're talking about a public safety facility. We have been for a few years. Actually, we have been for a long time. Um, this year, it, it, it's getting some traction, we think, and, and the, the committee is now um, doing some work with a consultant to, to uh, have a pretty tight timeline to come back for some suggestions. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. The advisory committee is doing some analysis on debt uh, funding and, and the administration is also uh, assisting in, in doing some work with um, our debt and, and what kind of levels we will be seeing in the future. That's gonna have a direct uh, relationship with this public safety uh, facility and funding it. Capital, uh, capital plan is out there to be under, uh, to be updated right now. It runs in the same timeline uh, with the budgets, with the operating budgets, so that will be returned again uh, second half of November and updated. So we'll, we'll, the capital plan I've used right now, obviously the, the numbers we have, but they will be updated uh, within, a within about a month. Fiscal year for new contract negotiation, I'm sure the town administrator loves that. Um, they begin in late fall and early winter, so we've got some, some union contracts to, to renew. Health insurance renewals, um, as you know, there's some federal regulations out there, especially with the Affordable Care Act, that will increase uh, not only our, some of our reporting, uh, but some of our base costs for our uh, premium renewals. We will, uh, we've already gotten about a one to two percent um, estimate that will be in the base renewals for fiscal 17. So we're monitoring that. We're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna be negotiating with our outside vendor and, um, and and try to get the carriers to give us the best the best available options. Other post employment benefits liability report. Uh, we will have a new one again. This is the one that the big report that years ago was so ugly, no one really wanted to look at it because it was up in the 60, 80 million dollar range and has now, you know, uh, come down a good third, third uh, down to about a third of that or maybe even a little more. So we'll, we'll update that, It'll, that'll be interesting to see and we'll, we'll have more news on that. And the free cash, obviously, I, I mentioned that um, coming down a little bit, that's available for next year for the variety of those reasons. The five-year financial projection, this is, um, and maybe the, the biggest thing to take away from this is this is based on some of the operating departments and school budgets between a three and uh, probably a blended rate of three and a half, four percent. So the fiscal 16 actual balance, levy balance that, and, and, and the assessor will be talking about this during his tax rate, um, you know, his tax rate hearing. However, the, the actual levy balance ended up being 
just under 2.5 million. Um, you can look at that as a very good thing, I think. Uh, it's pretty high. Um, so we'll, 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 you know, we'll see what that, ha what happens with that. Next year, um, in the following years, you can see our levy balance on that chart does go down. I think a few years ago, several years ago, we had that chart somewhere in the red towards the end. It is no longer in the red. I think that's good. We're structurally getting more sound. However, um, I think, I and this is my personal opinion, I think the town administrator would agree that we're going to have issues with the, um, again, the tax impact. Not so much the levy balance, again, where we can, you know, we can raise money. That's fine. You know, we can raise, we'll have plenty to raise probably. Um, it's more, you know, what is that going to cost the, the uh, you know, Tom Smith down the road um, in, their, in their tax bill. That, that's going to be the thing to watch. So we'll, we'll see that in 18, uh, um, 19. We're going to see a few years where, it's, uh, where that impacts. I didn't show it because it fluctuates a little bit. For 2016, the actual impact was about 1.99%. Again, the assessor will go over that f during the hearing. However, it, it ended up being fairly, um, fairly good. Um, Excuse me, Brian. Yes. For people that may be watching, even some that are here, can you explain in, in Reader's Digest version to the extent it's possible, the second item under one, two and a half percent allowed increase. What, what tell people what that means? Yep, that's just, the, that's per the state mass law that was, uh, I believe back in the 80s, that set the regulations on uh, each community could increase their levy limit by two and a half percent of their prior fiscal year levy limit. Um, each year, the levy limit is set through through some machinations uh, and, and, and certified by the DOR. And it's just a simple formula that 2.5% of that can be raised to your levy limit on each year. Now, there's other things that go into that. There's new growth and, and um, what they call capital exclusions and excluded debt. When you say levy mm -hmm. limit, can you also explain what the, the column numbers mean, the 819? What is that, the limit? Is that how that relates to increase in taxes? Just so people understand what we're talking about. Yeah, sure. The so the so the so the levy limit um, is basically what you can tax. It doesn't mean what you will tax. Um, I, again, there's a few categories within that. Um, uh, for instance, um, our our wonderful, uh, fairly new schools that we built go into uh, debt um, that is added on to the levy limit because they're excluded debt. So it's, it's a special category that you just put that in addition to your levy limit. So that levy limit isn't what you're going to spend. It's, it's basically what you can spend. Um, you know, and then you add on to that your local, uh, mostly your local receipts. Uh, there's some different categories in there, but in transfers, other things like that, but mostly local receipts. And, and then, you know, with that bottom line, um, it, it's fairly simple. You take out your, your budgets and your, your debt and, and all your little uh, your odd miscellaneous things. Um, and then what's remaining is your, is your, um, you know, your excess levy capacity, what they call uh, the excess levy capacity. Now the town, particularly South Bro, for years um, taxed pretty much to the, uh, it's an ugly term, a tax to the max. Uh, we, when I first started uh, for several years, we actually had to watch the levy limit because we were close. In some years, we we were right at it, um, th and that hasn't been that way for uh, a few years now. Some of that reason for that is some unexpected growth. Um, new growth we're pretty conservative with, and, and, and there's components of new growth that the assessors can't predict that have come in uh, a little stronger than, than uh, predicted. Again, you'll probably hear that from the assessor during the hearing, but, but that's kind of the, the, the simple version of it. Um, sure. So last slide, I told you it wouldn't be long, is the dates of importance. The warrant is open today, or will open today. Uh, budget and money articles due mid-November, and the budget and capital, as per uh, the usual annual reviews, will be done by the town administrator, myself. Um, capital, the town accountant will also be uh, reviewing uh, any requests. Warrant closes in early January. Budgets reviewed by the selectmen and advisory beginning January 6th. I think you're all familiar with that. The board of selectmen scheduled at least to vote on the budget. That's how excited Heidi is. 
Um, the, the Board of Selectmen is, voted to, is supposed to vote on the budgets February 2nd and annual town meeting in April. So again, it's early, but not too early. Um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of a taste of maybe some of the things coming. And you know, in the coming days or, or weeks, if, if any individual member has questions on any of this, they're, they're happy to approach the town administrator or myself, Heidi, anyone here that, you know, Paul, and uh, we'll certainly get you more information. Thank you. Uh, questions, comments, uh, Mr. Clement? So uh, one, so appreciate the uh, discussion um, on the previous slide and the five-year financial projections and the, uh, how the levy limit is calculated. I think that's helpful for everyone. Um, it, you know, I was looking at new growth and can you explain a little bit more about what um, the new growth numbers consist of and then looking out looking at 2017 um, you know I mean there's a these are estimates right but there's, yes. there's a significant reduction uh, is that based on some empirical uh, evidence that you have is that I see that you know 420 450 25 400 400 you know where did those come from and you know, so what goes into the new growth and where do those estimates come from? Sure, we, uh, and this is a conversation I have to have with the assessor that I have not had yet, um, primarily because he just finished his, uh, his uh, evaluation for the town, so I'll be sitting down with him. We'll actually revise these once the, um, once the budgets come in next month and we go along a little further, um, especially for next year, because that'll be sort of our year that we can start fine tuning, um, we can adjust some of these. But the new growth, a component of it, um, the assessor does not, well, let me step back. The, the Southboro's sort of a town that, that for a while um, has been built out, uh, almost built out. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of, whole, you know, um, large housing starts. Um, so for a while, I mean, the, the, the old joke would be Mark and, uh, you know, Mark Robodeau, the building inspector, and Paul, the assessor, would be trying to find, you know, as many uh, porches and, and, and some of the things like that, to some of the small home modernization projects to get into that new growth. Um, but there's a component of it that's based on uh, telecom issues and personal property issues that come from the state. And he doesn't know what that is. It's sent to him sort of uh, late in the year. Um, he can't estimate that, and, say, and, and it sometimes catches him a little off guard. And I, I don't have the number in front of me, but this year was one of those years. He got a number that exceeded what he thought. Um, and and I, that's happened before to us. And it may have been in 15 or 14. So um, that's how that number can kind of get a little, a little odd. Um, and, and the other thing is the timing of some of the, some of the items. As you know, uh, sometimes the fiscal year closes, and, and depending on the permits and the, the way some of the, the developments go, it, it, um, it may come in just under to bolster some of those numbers or, or fall outside the year. Um, so these are pretty much was the last conversation I had with him. But again, I will be having another conversation that might be a little more, um, um, you know, a little more finer. Um, and then in the next few weeks uh, before his hearing. And, um, and, and then, as I said, next, next month, not only will that be uh, revised, but, but some of these budget numbers will also be uh, adjusted a little bit. So new growth is limited to um, new housing starts, residential? Part of it, yes, yes. Some of it's personal property, uh, telecom issues, uh, housing things, uh, you know, smaller projects, et cetera. Yeah, so, you know, in terms of growth with our, in our commercial space, economic development and growth there, these, these mm -hmm. numbers do not include? Nope, nope, that would, go, that, that would go in there too. That would go in there too, correct. So um, any efforts, um, and, and, and again, this gets back to um, the last year or two where we've focused on economic development a little more. Um, any of those efforts going into that, um, if they do pay off, you may see them uh, at least partially, uh, well, you will, I shouldn't say you, you might, you will see a any of those uh, hopeful wins come through, come through these projections and numbers. Right, and so, the contrary mm -hmm. holds true, right? If we have an exodus of companies that were to leave, 
Uh, I see those numbers dramatically drop. Yes, you're exactly right. You wouldn't you lose, it, it's kind of quirky the way it works. You wouldn't lose the, the levy limit, but um, you, it, it creates other issues with revenues. Yes, yeah, the bottom line is yes, you're right. All right. Thank you, Brian. And, and Dan, with those businesses, the issue is not so much the property tax, it's the personal property tax. Yeah. That's where you would, you would lose. Um, and, and just one other point that, that Brian made, but just to kind of take it a little further, we don't have any other Madison places on the docket right now. You know, we don't have any big projects like that. That gave us a big boost over a two-year period. And now we're seeing the downside of that back into a normal, mm -hmm. you know, I'm putting on additions, we're doing this, we're making home improvements, mm -hmm. those type of things. We're not seeing big developments. If Park Central you know, comes to fruition and a lot of that housing stock, you're going to see that number spike for a couple of years probably, and then it may come back down again. So it's, it's going to be, you know, some of those depending on what we get for developments or if we get in some, you know, large company for new business uh, that has a significant amount of personal property. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and Thanks. as you know, part of it goes back to, uh, I know the town administrator is uh, maybe a uh, um, somewhat alluded to it, but part of it is smart, smart growth and, and how you, what kind of business you get in, what developments you get in, quite frankly, um, if the housing, you know, the age old debate of school age kids, you know, coming in and, and it's great when you get it and then down the road it's, it's a loser <laughs> um, because, because they're expensive, right? And um, so some of the commercial development, those, uh, those are great to get in if you can get them. Um, and some of the other, you know, senior housing, things like that. Mm -hmm. All things the planner knows, and I'm sure you're familiar with, but but um, but things like that. It's, it's it's the type of things the town attracts, too. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Nothing further. Uh, one question, uh, Brian. On DPW, I know Karen's here, but I'll ask you directly. A new full-time employee for the transit station, is that an additional employee? Because we know we're filling a vacancy. Is it an additional employee to the transfer station? All right, just yes. for clarity. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to say yes without you guys. Yes. Thanks. That's it. Mr. Shea. Um, just curious uh, on the financial projection sheet, the capital exclusion debt line, mm -hmm. where that decreases, but then has an increase in the last two years shown. I'm just curious what uh, may be included there, and I'm curious, have you factored in anything yet on public safety facility moving I, forward? Uh, I meant to take that and, and, and actually answer that question before anyone answered it, but uh, asked it, I'm sorry. Uh, but the public safety committee, no, is not in here. <laughs> okay. So that's a big one. Um, um, so, so none of those estimates yet, or although the next, I, I'm, I'm assuming um, the next, uh, sort of review, review of this particular uh, sort of projection, we will have something in there. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, I know the devil has been into in the, uh, what, what the total will be, but, but we'll put something in there, or, or we may put some alternatives in there to at least uh, illustrate that. Um, so as far as the, um, as far as the, uh, it, it looks odd, and, and part of the reason for that, there's actually a year that's negative, if you look close, on 19. And that, that's pretty much due to the spill, uh, excuse me, the school building uh, grant program. It runs, uh, I think it's a two or three year uh, cycle off of the, the bond schedules that were uh, committed at the time. Due to the timing of everything, uh, the MSBA at the time uh, uh, granted our, our grant. Uh, and it just didn't, normally they run even, hopefully. Uh, but in Southboro's case, it doesn't. So you, you're getting some years where you're paying off your school bonds, um, but you're still having the grant that's supposed to match those school bonds coming in. So it looks it looks a little odd, um, but it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't um, screw up the budget um, like you might think. It makes it look strange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, um, Brian. Thank you again. Um, one question I have is that you mentioned in part of your presentation that um, in prior years or when you first came on board, it, it appeared that the direction of the town was a tax to the max, um, and we've gotten away from that um, for a variety of reasons, um, a variety, variety of good reasons. Um, one question I have, and one thing I would like to see in this year's 
um, budget preparations with the asterisk assuming it's not an extraordinary amount of additional work is I'd like the departments to come in with their budgets consistent with the percentage increases that have been discussed but I'd also like to see perhaps as a side budget slash um, comment what they would to the extent their pockets were not constrained by strings how their budget would look to give in their opinion full customer service to the residents I ask that because I see town government as 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 a service industry we're in this business to serve the residents they elect us to serve their needs and I just like to know from the from the departments all the departments uh, what their budgets would look like if they could create them with complete public service needs in place so by way of illustration um, and this may not be an accurate illustration but by way of illustration are we uh, artificially suppressing the uh, fire department budget by not including each year sufficient amount of money for training and what is the impact of that on the residents <laughs> This is not a question, Brian, that I expect you to answer, but, but I'd like to know, in order to have a department operating based upon the department head's perceptions in the best interest of the residents, what would their budgets look like? Now, in many cases, the budgets may not look any different. Um, in other words, they're putting forth a budget proposal which is consistent with their best uh, efforts to serve the residents. But I don't know if that's the case across the board. And, and I'd like, I think we should know that. In other words, are the budgets being prepared and are they be pre being prepared in such a way that there is a, a shortcoming in some of the services that are being delivered? Now, I don't know, Mr. Purple, if that's a, 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 a exercise in, in futility, but I'd like to know uh, the answers to some of those questions. So uh, it's, it's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde um, I, I think that, you know, the, the departments, the, you know, pr they submit um, budgets that are um, cost conscious as well as, you know, asking for the things that they need, but they understand the overall needs of the town. Um, now, that being said, I think it would be kind of arduous and, again, not, you know, something that that we're going to be able to take a whole lot of action on to have them put together a completely separate budget showing you know here's what it would look like you know if um if, if we had no constraints if we had if money was not an object um i think it might be good if they were sub to submit something on the side that basically listed those items that they felt you know where they could put additional money um if they had it rather than to put it in a formal approach and you can get an idea of some of the things that they would want to fund if they could with an eye with a you know a general idea of what the cost would be well the reason I ask and I asked in response to the document that was prepared and I saw that the police chief was is looking for a couple of additional officers and obviously I suspect the reason he's asking for that is because he believes the public will be better served with the addition of those two officers and I fully support that I guess my question is, are there other things in other town department budgets, fire department, PPW, uh, you go right down the list, that the public would be better served but are not being included in that budget because of the constriction of coming within that 1% or 2%? Maybe just right. a list of those right. things, and, and right. that's so, what I'm looking and, for. Right, and, and we don't, you know, and, and just as the percentage, we don't look at you know, facilities budget can only go up 2% and DPW can only go up 2%. We look at the overall budget increase being X percent. And then we tell the schools, this is the same percent increase that you need to keep the K-8 budget at as well. Um, departments have not been afraid to bring initiatives forward and to bring things to, to you know, to me uh, and to Brian for our review. Um, sometimes they're things we haven't thought of. Um, and if it makes sense, um, we'll try and put them in the budget. And, you know, we've done that, you know, in the past several years. I think there's been several initiatives. Um, some of them have saved money. Mm -hmm. Some of them have proved uh, uh, to be more efficient. And, you know, some have, uh, have done both. And, and some have done neither uh, in terms of, you know, they, they may have been more efficient but not, uh, but not saving money. So 
like I said, we're having those conversations. I mean, you know, and I have no problem, uh, you know, providing, you know, you'll see those budgets. You can see that information unfiltered. And if the departments, you know, we can provide that to them, that direction to give us that information um, when we sit down and, and have those discussions. You know, they're not shy people. Well, that's, that's good to know so. because I just want to make sure that they're not being artificially suppressed in order to ach uh, 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 achieve a certain number in their budget which right. the, the directive has been issued to them in other words i want to make sure and i think town meeting should at least have an opportunity to vote that whether or not they want those services if the department head feels those services are essential to the services of the town i would at least like some conversation on that such that we can discuss that sure and, and i think but you also need to be cognizant of the fact that you know if you know joe wants additional training money chief paulus wants two additional people, Karen wants a new person at the transfer station, and, you know, Brian wants, you know, a new office. Um, something has got to give somewhere in terms of what is it that's most important to you and what you set priorities. And we're talking a little bit later tonight about your goals. Yep. Okay, so we need to figure, figure out where those are going to fit into your priorities. Yeah, I mean, not to be a dead horse, no, but, no, no, but I, to I the understand. extent that Chief Paulus believes X is needed and Chief Morrow believes X is needed and Karen, Ms. Galligan believes X is needed and those needs are necessary to serve the residents in town then I, I think at town meeting we should have a discussion about those increases to the extent that those are, those are uh, increases which are supported and, and valued by those department heads. Sure, and to the extent, you know, and we've done this before, we did this with, um, uh, with, with, uh, with Pam in the senior center. You know, we weren't able to do the initiative all in one year. We did it over a two year mm -hmm. period. We told people what we were doing, you know, and, and so, you know, that may be the case as well. We can't do it all at once, but we can put plans in place to do it over a couple of years and get us where you want to be. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is I just want to make sure that the department heads that prepare these budgets are comfortable at the end of the day with their presentations that they're able to deliver the types of services that is expected of them to be delivered. Sure. That's all. Yep. Understood. Yeah, we can we can communicate with the departments that and um, you know just to add two quick comments to, to the town administrators although he said a few things i was gonna say <laughs> um as usual it's too early for that um but the but the, the the two things you know the the departments know that adding a staff is tough um only because it's so costly these days with benefits and and the retirement and all that um however that doesn't mean that i think they're afraid to bring it forward if it's necessary but I do think the training in particular, and, and this is just a sense from being here, you know, a little while now, um, when times get tough, what's the first thing that goes? <laughs> and, and it's just really easy to cut. I think that is something that uh, departments should look at. If, if they've lost that over the years, they should look at trying to maybe get that back. Because some of that can be, um, you know, can save you money down the road. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's a real investment, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, while you're on the training thing, to the extent that, and I know you do, and I know you do, and, and, but if you sit down with the public safety chiefs and you look at their training budget and what they're able to utilize that budget in terms of training, it's very difficult for them to, mm -hmm. to implement a training system or train their personnel on the budget that they have now. And if that is compromising the, the safety of the residents, and it needs, we need to have a discussion on that. And that discussion needs to take place. So two things. First of all, I would hope that if, if there was an issue regarding you know, the safety of our residents based on mm -hmm. what we're funding our departments with, I'd be hearing about it long before we're sitting here now. Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> OK, just checking. Um, and I, I forgot what the second thing yes. was. But, but <laughs> you know, that's. You know, like I said, we, we uh, you know, it, oh, that was the second piece was. Mm -hmm. So in the past several years, and, and I think Brian can attest and, and uh, Ken doesn't have the, the history with it, but we have tried to um, restructure some of the way that the training was funded or not funded to try and at least put a base in place so that certain things are happening every year, certain types of training are being done every year. Mm -hmm. the, thing now is to build upon that and to add pieces to that and add other things to that and add other live trainings for for fire and uh, to add other components for management uh, uh, promotional opportunity uh, type training for management pieces for police 
things like that so we can add those pieces in and build on those so that we can improve the training every year. It's not like we're going to go ask for $200,000 in training and just throwing money at it. We're trying to build a systematic program. So, yeah. um, is, is there any way of any type of a comparison as to what other towns do with regards to training in public safety departments? I mean, is that information that other towns readily give up, or is it something that you have to dig out by looking at their individual budgets? I'm not sure how much detail you would find. Yeah. You know, it, you know, it probably would be conversations the chiefs would have to have with their peers. Um, again, you're, you're going to have to find comparable departments, and you know that can be difficult depending on how the how the uh, staff is structured. Um, but you know, it is something we can take a look at and and see how they're doing them. I know that the chiefs have identified ways to do things, and you know, um, Ken has has been very good about that, especially in last year's budget. You know, there were various types of training, and I think he had five or six different programs that he wanted to fund, and essentially it was, we'll do these two and pick another one, and we'll do that. But I would fully expect that we're going to continue to grow that. But what other communities do is one thing, but what they feel is right for their departments right. and the training and everything is what's important to me. I would hope we've already had some of these discussions before this evening, which apparently we have before we received the packet and I, I I for one do not want to send a message out there that the sky's the limit you can have whatever you want when we're looking at new new growth numbers going down which also impacts CPC funding and everything else and personal uh, property taxes so I I'm not comfortable sending the message out there let's ask for more than we actually need to provide the services that we presently have but if there is a deficit and it's identified. I would hope that the department head has already made that aware to the town administrator. Yeah, what I'm not I'm not suggesting they ask for whatever they want to. I'm just want to make sure that I said I don't I hope we're not right. saying that. No, message. that's not the message that I asked for. That and, and that's not what I was asking for. What I'm asking for is I just want to make sure that the level of services are being uh, that we're able to deliver the met level of services based upon the guidelines that they're being given in terms of the budget structures and i believe that we are okay yes yep. anything further no. that was my concern too okay thank you brian yeah so so one la uh, is there anything here is there anything that you know you want to put back on the shelf for a year is there anything that you don't you don't want to move forward with is there anything you want to add to the list that you don't see yes okay uh, then I guess we're not done well <laughs> the, the, what you have you had the disposition of Fayville Hall because it, it houses two employees right if I'm correct that the, the uh, South Union ha houses two and a half employees That's so correct. I don't think that half makes a difference in terms of the the continued viability of those buildings so one of the goals that I am going to be discussing when we get to our next agenda item is a full evaluation of the town's buildings. And I don't think we should just identify one building. I think that, that discussion needs to morph into a larger discussion about the town's buildings um, and uh, perhaps money-saving opportunities there. So I don't know, Mr. Purple, if that's part of this discussion now in the budget discussion, but as you and I have talked about back and forth now for at least two years. Yes. I think it's time for the town to have a full evaluation of our existing buildings and, and how we're utilizing those buildings. And to me, it's unless someone can convince me otherwise to have buildings in which we are just housing and operating two employees, to me, it doesn't make sense. But maybe someone can convince me that it does make sense. Um, I'm not going to be that person. Yeah. So um, I, I do think we need to address that. And, and if that's part of the budget discussion, then yeah. we should include that discussion now with, with Mr. Ballantyne, when he's here. No, I, I, I think that I think that it is something that is important. Again, we have had those discussions, um, and when um, when last we left our heroes, um, we had created a facilities mm -hmm. review committee. Um, I was suggesting that we really need to bring somebody in and do a master plan for our buildings as to what we have, the conditions, future needs, uses, and uh, some recommendations on how to get the best. Um, um, you know, m where to put our departments, I guess, that makes the best sense and uses our buildings the best we need, and then getting rid of the buildings that we don't need or finding other uses for them. Um, the board wanted to wait to set this committee up and let the committee run that process, and 
you know, we really have not had any interest um, for that committee. The Public Safety Committee has kind of run off and, and, and doing their own thing um, and doing it very well. Um, but this is kind of, you know, falling a little bit behind. Fayville Hall is kind of the, you know, the, the tipping point because when the cable moves out, we fall under the responsibility of all the utilities, the insurances and everything that they've been paying to this point. Um, and then it really doesn't make sense for us to have two employees alone in a building, you know, and then, you know, you can even look at, you know, from safety concerns. To that end, um, we had talked a little bit about um, the new state initiative um, through the Division of Local Services Community Compacts um, that the governor's office has put together. And essentially, um, the communities are allowed to submit applications to the state for um, a broad range of things that we think um, we need to get done here in town, but we don't have the funds for, we don't have the resources for. Um, the state will review the application. They'll provide you the resources to do it in terms of people or expertise. And if those people or expertise don't exist or they're not available, they will then provide you funding to go out and to procure those uh, resources to get done what you need to. And in speaking with um, Vanessa and I have been reviewing this a little bit. We've asked the departments for some input. And um, I'm going to begin to put together uh, with Vanessa a community compact agreement application with the state to come in and take a look at auditing our buildings and our facilities. Oh, well, that's true. All right. And, and so that's going to, so, you know, it, it wasn't working the way that we had talked about. This option is available. Again, we're very fortunate right now because we've got a lot of former town managers, uh, people that we have that, that are friends to the communities in these positions right now that can help us to try and get the funding that we need for these things. So um, we will be submitting something and, um, you know, looking to see what we can do and, and the state can help us with. Yeah, and one thing, again, not to dominate the conversation or to identify areas of past failures, but I have been sitting here now almost for six years and for every one of those years we have been discussing the condition and the ownership and the maintenance and the utility of town buildings. And we have talked about it and talked about it and we've kicked it that can down the road and we haven't done anything about that. And now I'm not, I'm not being critical towards anyone because the, ultimately the decision comes here and we're not making the decision. But I think it's time for this board to make a decision on the town buildings, the use of those buildings. And to the extent there is revenue there that can be utilized by the town in other aspects of town government. And again, two employees for an entire building. And we, we have it more than one, just, just one building. So at some right. point, I think we need to say, all right, it's time to make a decision. Let's move forward. But before we can do that, let's get the information. Now, with regards to this state initiative, Mark, what are we looking at for a timeline? Are we looking at years for that information? Or is that something that can be done between now and the end of the year? Do you know? The application can be done. The application will be in, and we'll hear back and have discussions about how we can move forward on that probably, you know, in a matter of weeks. Okay. Okay, so by Thanksgiving, we should have an idea of, of uh, from the state as to how we can proceed on that and what they can do for us. And, and just so that I understand, and again, it would be my understanding, you all might already understand this, they will come in, they will give us an evaluation of all town-owned properties the current condition of those properties, the current utilization of those properties, and perhaps even what the market would bear for those properties if it were for, to be put on the market, or is that something beyond their ability? It, it depends on what they give us. So okay. in other words, we need to explain to them. So you give them an application with a broad brush as to what you're looking for. They call you up and say, all right, so I understand what you want to do. Give me a little more detail about it. All right, this right, we've got a person that we can have come in and spend you know, 40 hours or two weeks with you and, and work on this issue with you. Um, or, you know what, we've got somebody who can come in, but I think it may be better to have, you know, we've got some money uh, set aside. We can bring in a consultant to help you to get where you need to be on this. I'd like to hear from the other members of the board to the extent that this is not as big an issue for them than it is for me, then let's talk about that. But I, like I said, we're going to be talking we should have started at 7. We're obviously behind the agenda. We're going to be talking about what our goals are. And one of my top three goals is to evaluate the current condition of the town's buildings and the use of those. And I just don't know if it, it raises to the level of import on the other members as it does with me. Mr. Klenda. Yes. 
And do we need <laughs> Brian and Heidi here for this? We don't. Wanna, I'm okay. sorry. I, I apologize. Well, yeah, I think it is part of the budget process, though. Okay. If we're going to need okay. funding for an assessment, then that's something this board has to give a directive. Yeah. If well, we, we don't have it in this budget, and it's something that you're going to be asking at, in the April town meeting, then we need to know that. Well, we don't. Like I said, we don't know if we're going to be. Okay. Yeah, we're going to. Don't know if we're going to need any funding. We need to know what the state can do for us. That being said. You have a we, deadline, though. Well, we, now we understood. We did have the forethought to put money aside in that engineering art, engineering consulting article that the board right. controls. So there is money there to help as well. And even if we, um, for some unknown reason, do not receive the information in a timely fashion for town meeting, this board should make the decision sooner than later to move an entire department into the other building that's underutilized and to see if there's a savings in doing that, in closing the building and moving the department for town meeting. I mean, you know, the money doesn't grow on trees and we see numbers going down. So if right. there's a possibility to move right. the department, that, better that, utilize the building. That, that process, yeah, that process is already being discussed. Okay. No, I agree as well that this should be a priority item and just quickly I attended that MMA conference a couple weeks ago and the lieutenant governor was there talking specifically about this compact program so it's good to hear that you're right. thinking of this project specifically as a way to, to utilize the resources that the Commonwealth is offering. So. Anything further on the budget? Thank you again. Uh, our next agenda item. Thank uh, you related to the discussion of fiscal year 16 selectman goals. What I asked Mr. Purple to do was to uh, reach out to each individual <coughs> member and solicit from them uh, their top three goals that they'd like to see accomplished um, in fiscal year 16. And I thought it was important for a number of reasons. One, uh, so that each of us knows what the other board members' uh, primary uh, um, policy priorities are to having in mind those policies when we make decisions which could impact those policies uh, we need to be cognizant of those policies and, and third I think it's important for the residents in town to understand exactly what uh, the five of us think uh, the policies and priorities are in town so it, it's also a it's a, uh, a community based uh, service and so what I asked each Mr. Purple to do is to have each member send to Mr. Purple their list and Mr. Purple was then going to assimilate that information or summarize that information for purposes of discussion this evening and uh, Mr. Purple with that preface and introduction uh, I'm going to ask you to lead the discussion if, sure. if you would. So um, and can I have what you just handed out? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So I have just passed out to you um, some of uh, the information. Basically, it's, it's everything that each of you submitted to me um, in terms of your top goals. Um, some of you gave me three. Some of you decided you wanted to do more. Um, and what I wanted to, what I tried to do is uh, on the second page, um, I just kind of consolidated those goals into a list didn't assign a person to them. Obviously, if you want to go back and look at the, you know, the email trails behind it, you can see who submitted what. Um, and I have no problem going through and just identifying who did what, if you'd like. Um, however, um, I broke it down into two categories. One of them were common goals um, that, uh, that at least a majority of the members, you know, listed in their responses. Um, and there were two items that fell into that category, the Main Street Project and also the uh, public safety co uh, complex study. Um, and then there were the other goals. Um, and those are the goals that were not mentioned on a consensus of responses. However, if you take a look at, at some of them, um, they do share some common themes. Um, so for example, um, you know, there are nine other goals under, under the, uh, the consolidated list. Um, goal number two for other goals, uh, improving public communication um, policy for you know a time frame for uh, response responses to be given back to residents when they make inquiries 
um, trying to get town service available electronically uh, as many as possible and trying to automate things to make it easier for residents. That kind of um, jibes with number seven, customer service orientated atmosphere, doing feedback surveys um, for, from customers to make sure that we're adhering to the policies we're setting forth. It also is similar to number nine, uh, new, co new coordinated software for townhouse systems. Our computer systems need to be uh, updated. We've talked about updating our financial management systems. Um, that's a, a significant endeavor. Um, so, you know, that's something that seems to fall into that same type of category. Again, uh, streamlining government, uh, goal number three, um, you know, reviewing committee committees for relevancy and consolidation. Uh, goal six was essentially the same thing, just a little bit more direct in looking at specific roles and responsibilities for Public Works Planning Board and open space. Uh, and also uh, item eight, which dealt with the encouragement of additional participation on mm -hmm. boards and committees and trying to get new people involved and how do we do the outreach to try and get uh, people involved and, and, and to take the chance to put new people on committees that, you know, that have important, uh, important business to take care of in town. So if you look at it in that fashion, instead of looking, uh, you know, at, at 11 goals, you know, you're basically looking, you know, having a discussion about seven. The chair had, had, had said top three. I don't know, you know, it's up to the board's discretion as to whether or not they want to mm -hmm. look at something beyond that. Well, I think obviously, first of all, thank, I want to thank everyone for doing it. Um, I know that sometimes doing these things are, uh, it's extra work, but it's, it's interesting that um, at least four of the five put as one of their top three priorities, if not the top priority, uh, the public safety building needs. And this, again, is one of those issues that has been discussed ad nauseum. This is famous since, what, 2007 or before then? No, the beginning of time. Beginning of time. <laughs> and, and I do think it's, it's, it's something that this board can finally make a decision on. We can finally uh, work to build consensus in the community and we can we can make uh, we can make it a point to have this discussion fully, but also to conclude this discussion successfully. And um, you know, I, so again, that's something that it seems like we're all in agreement on. And uh, unless there's a major hurdle that I'm unaware of, I think we are uh, aiming towards that. Uh, and then we're also pretty much consistent on the Main Street project. Um, and again, um, something that has been talked about and talked about for a while, uh, it gives us another opportunity to, to complete that project and end the discussion on it. Um, some of the other ones are, 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 are interesting, very interesting to me, and, I, and to the extent we can explore some of them now, um, the merit-based pay system, who would like to speak to that? Yes, sir. So I know we've talked about this before. I, I, it, it, to me, um, the best, and we're likely need coordination with, uh, you know, with with other groups on this. But, um, and it, and I think it goes in line with, uh, you know, another one of mine was a customer service oriented mm -hmm. atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to have employees that when when employees go above and beyond. Um, they should be recognized for that. And when they are recognized for that, uh, you know, we do this on our own, in my own um, company. And uh, not only are they encouraged to continue to do more, um, but it encourages others to, you know, strive to do more as well. And you identify the highest performers and you reward those highest performers. And those that um, aren't performing at that level um, if they're good valued employees, okay, they, they are retained. If they're, if they're not living up to, you know, the standards that we require, then we should help them, you know, find employment elsewhere and, and then go out and attract with a merit-based system, uh, people who want to come in and, uh, you know, and, and always continue to perform at a high level. So, um, you know, I want to pay for, pay for performance and, uh, when any, employee in in town exceeds expectations i think they should be um compensated for that excellent anyone else want to combat comment on that issue no, i agree 
Let me ask you this, uh, Mr. Purple. Right now, our system under the salary administration plan, it leaves, am I correct, it leaves little to no area or wiggle room for a department head to recognize outstanding performance of, of one of their employees? Uh, it, it does so in terms monetarily. It does so only to the extent that there is room in the budget to do so. Um, some of the larger departments have the ability to be able to absorb um, an increase above and beyond for good performance. Uh, some of the smaller departments, uh, you know, do not have that same latitude. So there is a there is a little bit of inequality at this point. And um, I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but if there's a way to at least work towards the implementation of Mr. Kalenda's idea, how would we do that? Well, I think that um, you would need to uh, work with the um, with the personnel board. Um, the personnel board has discussed their goals for the year. Um, I know that both Miss um, Hale and myself have brought this up to them, and we've discussed it as we did last year. And um, I'm not sure that it's going to be something that they're going to, you know, quite frankly, get to this year, um, because depending on how this works, if we move forward with formalizing a human resource position, it may mean shifting some of the responsibilities from that board to a human resource director, which will then require significant changes to the SAP, and it's going to take, you know, a significant amount of work between now and town meeting. So while it is something that is important, it's not something I think that they're going to be able to get done between now and town meeting. Could it at least be established as a goal or priority, if not something that can be done prior to town meeting uh, or by town meeting, something that is a clear goal and objective of uh, the personnel board for, you know, next year? It, it is something they're interested in. It's not something that they're saying we don't want to do it. We don't think it's something we need to do. Um, I, I think that you've got people on that board. You've got professionals in this town who feel it's something that, you know, we definitely need to explore, um, but we need to make sure we do it the right way. And I not, don't think it's something that we can roll out, you know, um, department heads, all employees, all non-union employees at the same time, because I really think that department heads need to get a feel for how to do this. Um, it's, it's different, um, and it is difficult to do, quite honestly, because you, know, you need to be um, you know, a manager, and it is very difficult sometimes to do that. And you know, sometimes in the office, when you have two employees, and you've got one employee that's you know, doing a great job, and one that's doing okay, and you know you want to make sure that you maintain the harmonious work environment. You know, if one person is getting more than the other person, sometimes that creates tensions. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying sometimes that's the way it is. So it, it's more of a it's it's more of a training, and expectations, and you know, for implementing you know a uh, a program like this, it's just it's different. So I would like to see it done, and and I we all and, and, and I, board is and I would too know, is is uh, is in agreement of that. Then um, I would like to see us make some you know demonstrable steps towards it, and help move others towards it if we think it's and I am hearing that we do think it's something that's valuable. I think we owe it to our employees, um, and you know they should be recognized um, for outstanding performance and. And again, that, that, that comes back to your, Mr. Rooney's earlier comment about services towards our residents, right? So um, it, the, we have so many people in, town, uh, in our town offices that are um, customer facing and those that um, it perform at the highest levels that I think should be compensated for that and encourage others to do the same. So if there's anything that I or this board can do to help uh, continue those conversations and, and, and move those conversations to action, I'd, I'm all for it. Well, I think if we move forward with some of these initiatives that we've discussed tonight, there'll be opportunities to have those discussions with the personnel board to ensure that at least if not something that can be accomplished this year, that the groundwork can be laid so that we can you know, begin to move in that direction. 
Could go, I? Go, oh, I'm sorry. Go, Could go, I ask that the personnel go. board, along with the town administrator, work together and make a presentation to this board as to how we could achieve it before? I, I know I brought it up in a contract situation, and it was hard to identify what the expert, uh, separate what is expected of the job and the performance of an individual and how to reward outside of what your expectations are. So I, I would like the personnel board to give feedback to this board and how to accomplish it before we make it. The how to, the how to is maybe a little bit more difficult right. than, than, than implement than right. who deserves it because I assume if you ask every department head, they're going to be able to identify immediately those employees that are doing uh, the better job or the best job in comparison to other ones. I, I think they should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they want to is a different story. Right. Uh, but I do agree in terms of how to do it. We should have that discussion because I do think it's a, it's a very important objective and goal. Call it whatever you will, want to. Um, uh, Selectman Semino had one goal. Um, his goal three was... Um, talked about specifically assigning an individual selectman as a liaison between the board, our board, and every other board and committee in town. It would then be incumbent on that selectman to seek out an interface with each of his slash her assigned boards and committees to keep abreast of current issues and ensure that the rest of the selectmen are aware as well. He, he, by doing that, he's not saying that you're excluded by, uh, to, to attend those meetings, but he would like to identify a selectman. So, for instance, Selectman Kalender, you are going to be the liaison to open space. Um, you would report back to the board on, on issues that the board needs to know or should know or, or issues that are coming up in open space that we may not get through the, you know, the, the regular lines of communication. Any thoughts on that, pro or con? So, I'll be and happy he's to not go here. First. I just kind of paraphrase what his, his I think goal it's, was. I think it's an interesting idea. Um, our, um, we'll see if it could work in practice. There's, there is, um, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'll say in, you know, I, I'm, I'm already on EDC in mm -hmm. particular. That that's um, uh, a time-consuming, valuable. Uh, role. Um, we've attended advisory uh, meetings before, I've attended ZBA and planning board meetings before. So um, if, if people want to um, be assigned to something and they would have an additional duty, an additional evening of, you know, attending those, um, okay. I, I get a little bit concerned on burnout and you can only do and attend so many mm -hmm. meetings. Um, you know, maybe in, in, uh, we could, uh, you know, get, uh, meeting minutes, uh, provided to us, um, more regularly. Um, that might be something that, that we could at least get a grasp of what is being discussed if we're not, uh, physically able to be there. Um, you can only get so much from meeting minutes at times as well, but that's, maybe that's another way to do it. Any other thoughts? Well, I, I represent the board on Shopsy, and I go to forums for Shopsy and conservation meetings, planning board meetings, uh, just to bring, and you see, I forward everything to Mark so that you get the information mm -hmm. as well. So I think it's a choice. I don't think we need to be monitoring the committees we're appointing, because if we're appointing people that we feel we're not getting information back from, then they shouldn't be there to start with. I mean, this is very public, what mm -hmm. we do. Um, I agree, if we can get the minutes, and if we hear that there may be issues, we should attend those meetings. But, um, mm -hmm. There's so much each of us can do as officials for this town, this time of year anyway. Yeah, yeah and you know, certainly from my perspective, I try to keep track of what meetings are ongoing and ones that are of, of, are of interest, I do make it a point to attend as much as I possibly can. Um, I would hope that Know, by assigning someone, sp uh, one of us specifically to a committee, that 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 doesn't hold them back in some way. You know, knowing that they're ultimately going to be coming to the board of selectmen, mm -hmm. most likely. Um, that you know, instead of using the the skills and the talents that they have to think through problems, come up with ideas, that they don't automatically 
default to, oh, well, you know, if I'm there at a meeting, well, what do you think? Right. Uh, I, I really think that we have, that we do need to encourage additional people throughout town to participate in boards and committees. Um, I think that there's a great amount of talent that is untapped in this town. Um, and I just would encourage them to, the people that we do appoint to, to use the, the talents that they do have and the knowledge and experience they have from their regular lives to, to put those to action. So. Yeah, I don't, I, and I agree with, with everything that's been said. I don't think there's at least much of a uh, sentiment for individual assignment of selectments to committees, but we can, we can leave that for another discussion point when it, uh, Selectman Cimino is back here, back and to discuss it. But I just wanted to bring it up because it was one of his uh, top three goals. Um, another one, uh, yes, may I? Uh, yeah. Is there a way to, you know, so I know meeting minutes, um, Mr. Purple, are posted, those that do them and post them timely. Um, uh, you know, is there a way to have a consolidated view of those in one location, or do, is it going to each uh, group's site and uh, looking for it? Is there a, a better way that those could be made available to us and really the general public? Well, I think to the extent that they're available on the website under the departmental page, I mean, you know, if you start throwing them all together mm -hmm. in one area, that's going to get convoluted. Yeah. Especially okay. when you've got agendas, yeah, right. Right. minutes, executives, packets. Okay. I'd like to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, Mrs. Faniff. She's now going to be our new IT selectman because she's talking about new software. Oh, you read my email. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> she talks about new software, and it, it's obviously it's a, it's an important, incredibly important goal. And maybe we could just get some update if there is any update, because I know the municipal technologies committee recently met yes can you give us just an update as to where things are headed or is it too premature to ask for that at this point i think it's somewhat premature okay. um uh, there was actually a conflict where brian attended the meeting i was a personnel board i had three reviews i had to do for my okay. staff um, but i do know that they are reaching out to departments to talk about um, uh, technology initiatives that they're interested in doing and i do know that the town clerk uh, is taking them up uh, on their offer and is looking to uh, meet with them to discuss uh, a new automation for um, uh, for dog licenses and he would like to see if they have an ability to provide funding or to recommend that this board approve funding out of that article um, that is set aside There's about four thousand dollars left in it from the original 35 I believe that was put in uh, to fund it this year so that we don't have to go through another process the way that we have been with dog licenses and we can try and streamline that a little bit, make it easier for staff, make it easier for residents and do it this March rather than get money at the annual town meeting and have to wait a whole nother cycle in order to implement it. So okay. so they are taking a look at departments and, and uh, town clerk is just jumped, jumped at the opportunity. Maybe once we have an, an, uh, some substantive information or update, you can just put it on an agenda. Sure. Because I'm hard pressed when a selectman puts it on as one of the top three agendas to to let it just go off into the the mist of the town. And maybe we could just follow up at some point to see okay. where we're at on that. And I know also in the community, it's a it's a it's a burning issue in terms of upgrading uh, technology. Uh, another goal that's mentioned on here, you'll see, is. Um, and I'm sorry to have to do his, this in absentia, but Mr. Uh, Selectman Semino uh, suggests streamlining the, the Board of Selectmen footprint in government. Simply put, he thinks we have too many boards, committees in town, including some that are no longer needed or functioning or both. We should clean that up. Any thoughts on that? Does he identify what those are? I don't see that in here. Did no. you see it? No. Oh. But I believe no, but Mr. Shea, Mr. But Mr. Shea did. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, not that there were not those specific ones that needed. No, no understood. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get yeah. to yours next. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I didn't include yours in that one. Yeah. <laughs> the town clerk is working on uh, boards and committees that are outdated and are not necessary any longer. Okay. 
Um, and and the, the last one I want to discuss, and to the extent anyone wants to discuss any of the other uh, information here, is, um, bear with me, clarifying roles and responsibilities for various committees and boards. Uh, Mr. Shea, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, so I had uh, posed that, and I think, I agree with Mark, I think this one would fit well with the previous goal that you had just noted that Selectman Semino had pointed out. Um, and I had gone and specifically had identified open space and the Public Works Planning Board, and not to say that it could, it's limited to them or that there are major issues with either of them, but my main point with respect to open space I don't want another barn hollow situation in this town. Mm -hmm. And I know that there was a meeting last night with the planning board on the potential for a development of property off Chestnut Hill Road. That open space uh, has uh, identified as a key parcel of land to, to keep as open space. Uh, I just think as early in the process as possible, if we can clarify what everybody's roles are, what responsibilities are, and then what those roles and, roles and responsibilities are throughout the life of the project as well. Who is responsible for oversight once we finally get to construction of projects, just so we don't have that, that same situation occur again. So, so are you suggesting, um, exactly, are you suggesting that some body committee entity, and maybe it's us, maybe it's not us, sit down and determine, okay, for future projects, not necessarily just this project, these are what we understand the roles and responsibilities are based upon the town bylaw. Well, yeah, what, is exactly, that? exactly, and if there's, if the town bylaw is not clear with respect to open space, is that something that, that we can try to clarify? You know, through at yeah, I'm wondering whether or not the planning board would be the better entity to. Well, and I, to I, I think a good starting point would be to try and have an open discussion with both the open space planning and the planning board, just to, just to start that. And um, I also had noted the public works planning board, and that really fell out from the discussion that we had on the sidewalk committee, where I had raised the question at the meeting when that was first discussed whether that should that task should even be a, a role that would fall under that group personally I saw sidewalks as a public works issue that could fall under their realm uh, others had different opinions I think we did arrive at a good compromise in the membership that we arrived at for the sidewalk committee but I just and even if you look at the language that's in the um, it talks about the roles and responsibilities of the Public Works Planning Board. I think it, that could be cleaned up. I think a lot of that is vague, and if you a strict reading of it, almost seems that their roles and responsibilities overlap with the advisory committee right. roles and responsibilities. So I think that you know, just yeah, to, to that clean that up would be a good thing to do. When you're cleaning that up, I think that, that the way that that bylaw was written, when it was written, and whoever wrote it, um, I don't know what sort of vetting process that went through. I don't know if anyone at this table does, but whatever vetting process it went through, I think it would go through a, a different vetting process now. Mm -hmm. We eliminated three other commissioners, cemetery and water, and consolidated, consolidated it in the Department of Public Works. But it's a legislative act, so even if we wanted to clean it up, I suggest we use town council with in, the language. In town meeting. But early on, yep. so that individuals can participate in the conversation and open space i think we need town council's guidance on that as well and planning board have them part of it so mr purple in, in terms of moving those that goal forward and not just talking about it and then talking about it again two years down the road or a year down the road how do we how do we start that process with to the extent that this board agrees that there should be those discussions, which I think we agree. Well, open. Sp I believe town council has given an opinion to open space at one time. Uh, public works, like I said, is a legislative act. Right. He needs to be involved in that. So whatever we draft, it's going to take a year and a half to implement anyway. Just the process itself. Um, you know, Mark needs. Where you are going with it, Mark should have that discussion first. How do we? 
address it. Well, all of the committees. If there's a no, legal I, statute that he needs to be involved in. So, and I agree with you, but I don't think this board should pass the buck so soon. I think that you know you need to determine. I mean, you had the, the chair of the Public Works Planning Board sit in front of you several months ago, and we had a heated discussion. Right. And you know, the question was whether or not do we even want the Public Works Planning Board anymore? You know, does this board want to you know want to continue to use them? And you know, a lot of things were said in the heat of the moment. But I really think that you know you need to determine whether or not that you want some of these boards to continue or some of these committees to continue. Some of them are going to be easy. Some of these committees were set up a while ago. Nothing has happened. They've sat dormant for five years. Those ones are easy. Some of the other ones you need to determine, you know, whether you want to change the charge, whether you want to look at something different, whether there's a bylaw involved. But I think you need to at least set out the course. I don't think we should be paying Aldo to give us opinions on how to do things when we're not sure this is what we want to do or whether we know what we want to do yet. It's better to have at least kind of decide how we want to proceed and then ask him, how do we get there? I need, I'm not an attorney. Sure. I respect them. But it would be nice to hear from town council as to how he interprets that legislative act. It might not be as broad as we think it is. It might be more limiting, but I don't know that. So we're, we could be having an exercise that the mm -hmm. result we come up with wasn't even necessary because it never said that. Yeah, I, I, think, I think both Mr. Shea and Mrs. Staniff um, bring up a good point with regards to those. Those, uh, I, I certainly do not want to see another barn lane. Well, nobody worked harder at that than and, you did. Uh, so. uh, and, and I don't want a chair of a committee coming in here uh, upset that uh, he or she does not feel that they're being utilized pursuant to the, the, the legislative language slash intent in the bylaw or statute. So I think it does make sense to get those committees where we have that issue not necessarily the current concern but that issue and have council come in and give us a clear indication of what those guidelines and, and rules and the methods of operation should be and we could invite with regards to open space obviously mm -hmm. invite open space invite the planning board have council come here because if we're headed for another right. another you know cross in the road when when they collide or near collision we may be able to avoid that mm -hmm. um and again also with the with the public works planning board given our recent mm -hmm. discussion um is that something that we we can get Aldo in here to do yeah, could sure. he be prepared to do that for those two and are there any other or if there are any other boards or committees or uh, of similar concerns that that mr shea raised which are again when it's a top three goal i think we need to address it and not just acknowledge it uh, if there's any other ones, why don't we get those to you, Mark, and we'll yep. get him in here and have that discussion. And have them post a meeting. It's a joint meeting. Yeah. It's right. a conversation meeting on the roles. Right. Well, right. do you want to do that? Do you want to get Public Works Planning Board, yeah. OSPC Planning Board, and Aldo and everybody in the room? Yeah. Well, if we're going to talk about, I would recommend that if we're going to talk about the open, open space. space we want open space right. although in 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 planning board right and I see I think we need all those committees no understood I just don't know that you want to try and and have Aldo trying to handle both in one night no no okay. not both one at a time. that's what I that's what I was uh, just no, saying one at a time. right okay one at a time okay. one open space first and then the public work with planning yes that's fine in other words one committee ish one committee description at a time mm -hmm. and if we have additional ones of similar um, characteristics roles, we'll send those to you so they can be invited as well. Sure. It wouldn't hurt to have conservation come too. We can invite everyone. Just to hear the presentations. Given the, you know, right. we will have enough, generally, we generally have plenty of seats. So. <laughs> in the in, in the interim, to your point, I will then I'll have Aldo give an opinion on how he interprets the scope yes. of the responsibilities of the Public Works Planning Board as laid out in the special act. And open space. And open space as well? Yep. Okay. Written, yes. 
because all, the open all, space all, bylaws. All, all two sentences of it. Oh, yeah. say, there's the there's really not much, not very much there okay. to it, so it shouldn't be that much. Well, if he much. has an opinion, I think the opinion should be shared with the commission and the committee so that they have it as well before the meeting. Sure. If they have questions. Uh, were, were there, uh, are there any other issues or um, comments that anyone would like to make as a result of this exercise, which, which I think has been uh, productive, and I, I will res you can reserve comment as to whether or not you all think it's been worthwhile, but if you have any other comments or uh, I, I didn't, did not cover everything in, in the manner in which you think it should have been covered, let's talk about that, otherwise we can move on. We accept Hold it. On. So, are you setting goals this evening? We're or accepting are you these goals, correct? I think we, I thought by way of going through this, Mark, my, my sense is we set them and, and maybe we didn't identify one, two, three, and four, but I do think we all agree on the public safety facility. I think we agree on the entire thing. Yeah, the, the Main Street. Uh, we agree with um, Mr. Kalender's merit based exploring that with yep. the personnel board, et cetera. We agree with Mrs. Fannis. Uh, IT expertise um, and getting that um, a report on that. We agreed with uh, Selectman Shea's suggestion on the clarification of the roles and responsibilities of, of committees. Um, did I miss anything? Uh, and I think, I, well, I didn't, I don't want to talk about it again, but I do think, I t in fact, I probably talked about it too much, but in terms of the evaluation of our existing buildings, mm -hmm. I think there's an agreement sense that people want to have that information as well definitely so the, do you need anything more than that mark in terms of I, the goals um, no I said well essentially what we so essentially what your final goals are going to look like is essentially kind of what I suggested yes okay all right that's all I just wanted I just wanted to ensure that so I will so why don't I do this why don't I put them together for you to formally approve at your next meeting and I'll put them together so that you've got something that we can feel free to have and keep referring back to and make sure that yeah. things that we do during the year Key. follow and comply with the goals that we've set out. Key. Okay? Yep. Sounds good. All right. Uh, public comment. Uh, not seeing any. Uh, reports. Town Administrator. Uh, just a couple of items. Um, I did uh, already speak about the Community Compact. Uh, wanted to uh, make sure the board was aware. I think you all had them in your in your boxes about the Assabet Valley uh, grand reopening. Um, they're doing a ribbon cutting ceremony uh, this coming Saturday um, at the school. Coffee and pastries at nine. Ribbon cutting at ten. Uh, followed by a building tour, refreshments, um, the works. Um, if you're interested and able to go, you can let me know. I will let them know um, who's coming. Um, if you've not had an opportunity to tour that school, um, I think you'll be surprised. Vocational education today is not the mm -hmm. vocational education we knew. Um, it's, it's just, it's amazing. Um, you know, the tour that I've gotten over there um, from the culinary program to, um, to all of the other things they, they do. It's really, really interesting. Um, you know, and, and it's not just the kids that, you know, can't handle, you know, regular curriculum in, in, in uh, you know, in structured, I, regular high school programs over at Algonquin, you know, you need to be accepted mm -hmm. to do this stuff and that. So it really, it really is neat. So if you have an opportunity. So, and again, I'm probably going to step on my uh, words, but I can tell you that when I was growing up a long, long time ago, um, a vocational school was somewhere where people went that really didn't want to study hard in high school. They chose to go to the vocational school instead. Having had the opportunity to tour acid that, uh, it's 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 not that at all. It is at least uh, I was. Did you mention blown say blown away? Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, it was. I, it it, it yeah. is just a. It, it trains people for a profession, a, a a very valuable profession, and and what they do over there is, uh, it's hard to explain or describe without seeing it. Uh, it's something that they should be very proud of and we should be proud of as a town to be associated with it. Um, and again, to the extent I said anything that I shouldn't have said, that's kind of the way it was when I was growing up, but it's not that way anymore. It's a great place. And that's Saturday the 24th. Saturday the 24th. At 9 a.m. Yes, at 9 a.m., coffee and pastries, uh, ribbon cutting at 10, and then they'll be doing building tours after that. 
And uh, just to add on about ACIBET, I wanted to, you know, we should publicly thank the um, junior ROTC program at ACIBET that mm -hmm. came and marched with, um, I was proud to march with our veterans. I know many of uh, all the selectmen here at the table were, were at Heritage Day. And um, the uh, junior ROTC program from ACIBET, a number of their uh, cadets came and marched with us in the parade. And uh, uh, very, impress very impressive uh, young men and women um, in uh, the Corps of Cadets there and, and clearly at that school. So well Thank done. You. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, two quick things. Um, I just wanted to give you an update on the, um, uh, now that the chiefs have left, uh, the Public Safety Study Committee. Um, that has moved along. We had our kickoff meeting um, last, uh, last week um, with, uh, with the consultant, with Jeff Shaw. Um, and his team, um, very good meeting, very positive. Um, I think that, uh, um, you know, we've really got, in my eyes, the right person to kind of evaluate this stuff. He, uh, the consultant spent, I think, a total of five and a half, six hours um, with both chiefs combined um, on Monday, yesterday, going over uh, space needs requirements, looking at these various things. So you're gonna want this, you're gonna want this. This is necessary for, the state requirements, federal requirements, that type of thing. So we'll get an idea of what um, things look like. We did set a temporary um, um, or a draft project schedule. Um, they're gonna be holding committee meetings on October 26th, November 9th, these are all Mondays, uh, November 23rd, December 7th, and we're holding December 21st if needed. Um, will we? These meetings will continue to just move us down um, from looking at gathering the information in order to perform um, the type of analysis on what we need for a building to um, site analysis, um, uh, looking at budgets all the way down through uh, and budgetary needs and, and uh, limitations, um, space needs programs, um, reviewing the existing buildings, trying to determine what we can or can't do with those, including the existing police station to see, I know that that has been looked at um, several times and determined that, um, you know, that there really was no value in using that as part of another project. We're asking that question again, just because I want to have the answer again. If it's not consistent with what we've gotten, then, you know, we need to understand why. Uh, and so hopefully um, we will um, have some, uh, by your second meeting in November, we really should be getting some solid information as to uh, how things are, um, in the consultant's eyes, you know, should look and how it, things will fit on that site. And then do we need to have discussions with other parties uh, to try and help uh, bring that vision to, uh, to reality? Can I, can I just mention, uh, to the extent that there's an audience beyond this building, which I'm certainly hope, hopeful there is, um, those dates again, October 26th, November 9th, November 23rd, December 7th, and potentially holding December 21st. I mention that only because of the meetings that I've gone to, there's only been one resident at the three or four meetings that I've gone to, and this is a very, very important committee discussion. It's a very important discussion for the town. I would encourage anyone who's got an interest in this project to attend. I, I, I would go even so far, Mr. Purple, and you may tell me that this is, again, not an idea that can be uh, implemented, but to the extent that th that committee's work can be um, coordinated such that it can be replayed, whether it be taped, uh, I don't know what the, the capacity of, of uh, SAM is to do that, but it is such an important process, and uh, it, I can understand residents not being able to make it to those meetings, but to the extent that we can provide them with an opportunity to be informed via the uh, videotape, that would be a, a suggestion that I, I would like to hear your feedback on on whether or not that's possible. So all of the meetings, um, the, ever since the committee has begun meeting, um, uh, the meetings are, begin at six and the meetings are held over at the fire station. Um, it just makes it easier if we need to look at something, we're right there. Um, and um, there's been no issues. And again, there really hasn't been a whole lot of attendance mm -hmm. in terms of the public. We did have a couple of residents at the last meeting um, and every so often, you know, you know, a member of this board or two members of this board will show up um, 
and when Mr. Shea comes, he has to answer questions about what happened mm -hmm. before. So, um, <clears throat> but now we have Mr. Goodney on the committee who is able to handle that role. To the extent that, that Sam is able to come in and, and, uh, and tape some of these meetings, I think it would be interesting. We've already had discussions uh, at the last meeting, uh, and I asked the consultant, um, I'd like them to be available for us to do some cable shows mm -hmm. um, to talk about the process and move forward. But again, it, it might be good to see if we can have them tape you know, a couple of these. Because as you, you know, noted, there are only potentially five meetings right. before they come out with you know, a recommendation um, that, or, you know, whatever options to the committee, the committee then needs to bring forward a recommendation to this board and needs to make sure that that's something that this board is going to be willing to carry forward to town meeting. So um, I will, I will uh, touch base with Sam and see if they're able to, uh, to cover those meetings and give them our tentative schedule so they can put us into their queue. That'd be great. I mean, that's a priority for this board, that project as a whole. Absolutely. So I think Every meeting should be taped. Um, How often, Mark, have you had to go off into the fire station to look at some of the facilities, especially now, given that the consultant has already spent a lot of time there? Do you think those visits or those inspections will be less in number? I think so. I think a lot of that stuff will probably be done offline in between meetings um, so that, you know, they want to get, they want to make the most out of the meeting time that they have with the committee. So, you know, here's what we've done here's the work we've got and here's the product that we're starting to develop mm -hmm. from it and now we're at the point where we need committee input so maybe you could talk to mr hamilton about the the sure. the, the mechanics of having the meeting done here such that the taping would be a little bit easier sure and uh, maybe there's not the need to inspect the fire department uh, or the facilities or the police department given the proximity to where they've been meeting i do agree it's an important meeting to get out and to I mean, listen, at the end of the day, we're going to need consensus. We have to build consensus. We have to get, uh, we have to work very hard on public education. Um, and we have to uh, make sure all available sources of information are, are presented in multiple different media. So I agree with Mrs. Fanick. If we can get all those meetings recorded, I, I think that would be the better of the, uh, the choices. And it would be helpful for this board. I mean, there are meetings I have attended, and there are four or five residents there that aren't necessarily the same residents that are there when Brian's there or Mr. Rooney or yep. others. So I think yep. it would be helpful to me to see what's going on. Yep. Anything else? Uh, one last item I wanted to, um, I had planned to include this in my report and then I got a call from, from, from two of you asking me to include it. Um, I, I, I had noticed uh, based on the calendar um, that um, uh, it was time to check in um, with uh, Mr. Aswad. Uh, our new class two license uh, down at 264 Quarterville Road. And uh, so I had a, a conversation with, um, with Mark Robido. He's here this evening, um, uh, the building inspector. And he's been following up with, uh, with Peter Bemis and um, with Mr. Aswad. And this afternoon, Mark and I took a ride down uh, to the property just to take a look at, at items. Um, and to this point, um, the, uh, the following things have been done. Uh, the gas price sign has been removed. Uh, all of the curb cuts have been completed. Uh, all of the plantings have been completed. The paving um, was completed today. And um, I, his intention was to do it today, but I think it's going to be a, a tomorrow item um, or the next day. Um, he wants to, Mr. Aswad wants to seal coat the entire parking lot so it all looks somewhat uniform because the areas that were paved were only those areas that were not previously paved. Um, and the, uh, the parking striping is then scheduled to be completed before the end of the week. Um, if you recall, there are some improvements that need to be made to the existing fence. Um, the, the materials are there, the new panels are there for the fence. They have not been installed yet, but they are, they are on site. Um, and um, then a new fence uh, per the uh, requirements the board set forth is set to be installed next May. Um, so at this point, there are two pieces left that, um, that, that need to be done. Well, three, um, the seal coating was not a piece, but the seal coating, um, the striping of the parking area, and then obviously the improvements of the fence and uh, the extent of the improvements um, that, that were requested to be done will then be completed. Now, 
the plantings were to be done by October 31st. Everything else was to be completed by October 15th. The plantings are done earlier, and it's, it's uh, um, you know, at this point, potentially eight days longer than was uh, given by this board in order for him to complete everything else. So that's where we stand. I mean, if you have any additional questions, as I said, Mr. Robito is here. Yes. Go ahead. So we, this board has met many times with Mr. Aswad, and uh, we've had numerous violations before, I understand, and numerous times the opportunity was there to correct and, and it didn't happen. We all met and everyone agreed on certain dates and, and deadlines and, and uh, the owner agreed to those as well. Uh, so what I'm hearing is that some of those dates, um, he failed to meet those objectives. Is that correct? That's correct. So what are the consequences then of that? So does, does, is what we all agreed to have no meaning? Um, uh, was it just mere guidance or is, what are the consequences for the, uh, you know, his failure to meet the guidelines that we all agreed on? Just, just one caution, uh, and I don't want to get too far into this because if we're going to be talking about that, we should at least make sure that he or one of his representatives is here. Yeah. Um, and that's my only concern, Dan, that we talk too much about it and we, we do give him an opportunity to um, respond to any questions. I, I think you're, you are asking the question, listen, given what this board has previously ordered and in, in writing uh, committed to, uh, is there any, um, if, if, if there's been a violation, what are the next steps? Is that essentially right. what you're asking? So, right. and, and, and almost, you know, I, I don't know, I mean, the meeting was posted, uh, you're right, there's nothing particular on that item, but, but in, in, in um, many respects, I guess it didn't have to be because it was already set, those um, markers were already set and uh, at a previous meeting and I'd like to know what the consequences are for any failure to, to meet those markers that we already agreed to. So, Mr. Chairman, if I can just answer the question. So, essentially, um, what you would do with this, this applicant or this uh, license holder or any other license holder, if you have an issue, you would, um, you know, request that uh, they come before you um, and the reasons that you want to uh, you know, have them before you, um, and at that point, you know, you can um, determine how you want to, you know, deal with the applicant, uh, deal with, the, I'm sorry, it's no longer an applicant, deal with the license holder, you know, do you, um, is he answering your question satisfactorily, you know, in that, um, you know, he's going to follow through on the things that he had yet to follow through on, um, you know, are you looking to uh, suspend his license, are you looking to revoke his license, um, you know, or the other option, you know, is to wait. I mean, you're, you know, uh, about a month away, six weeks away from license renewal to begin with. So do you want to do a meeting with him in the interim? Do you want to schedule him for a meeting before the board to discuss his license before we get to annual renewal? I, yeah, and then I have another comment if I may. Mr. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, to me, it sounds like he reversed the order of the conditions and he's not in compliance. And if anything, the October deadline would be the last deadline due to the fact that he reversed the order of complying. So I'm willing to give him to the end of the month to do the paving, do the striping, and then we've got all three items off the table until spring in the fence. I see no need to have the property owner to return. I think this board made it very clear that we were gonna enforce this. Maybe weather got in the way of paving and the rain and I might say, all right, that's why we reversed the order, but I think October 30th should be the last time we talk about this until the renewal of the license. Mr. Klinda. <clears throat> so um, there has been fair skies um, <laughs> for 
quite some time. But, uh, you know, uh, so to me, um, you know, if we say something, I trust that, you know, we mean it. And when an owner says to us something and agrees to a timeline, he has to mean it. This particular owner has been here too many times and, and there's been too many delays and too many failures. And uh, it's literally gone on for years. Uh, and uh, I, I think we were uniformly clear as to what the dates were and every opportunity was made to meet those. I would be curious to know if he came to the building inspector um, prior to those um, markers when he knew he was going to miss them and asked for anything, any additional time or any leniency. Um, I'd love to hear that. And then, um, you know, noting that they have been missed again, uh, you know, e either, either our agreement with him means something or it doesn't. And uh, whether or not we give a day, a month, two months, five months, um, you know, we've already agreed as to what the time frame should be. And if that's been missed, um, I don't, and, and our building inspector is here, why wouldn't that license either be suspended or revoked today? Mr. Robodeau, again, I don't want to really get into um, issues relative to um, he said, she said, since the one of the he's or the she's is not here, but right. maybe you could just address Mr. Kalenda's concern if you can in terms of has there been any correspondence with you or have you had any discussions? Right. Um, you know, I've been stopping by on a regular basis to try to make sure that the, um, he kind of gets into compliance. I know that there was some, um, I've been talking to Peter Bemis and he, Peter was tied up uh, most of the summer with a big job in Westboro with the MC and he's just kind of got freed up. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's not what we, what you had ordered him to do, but um, the order's kind of reversed a little bit. What I can tell you is this, the site looks better than it has in the two years that I've been in town. I've never seen it look so good, and I've gotten, you know, compliments from the neighbors that say that, geez, it's, it's really starting to look good. There hasn't been any boats there. Um, you know, so I, I would, ask the board to please um, give the guy to the end of the week like he said he was going to do and then see where we are and then we can you know again six weeks from now um, he's going to have to go for a new license and at that time you can, he can answer any questions why it wasn't done I, I would only be speculating what about what about this type of a compromise between mrs fanif's uh, thoughts and yours mr Kalender, is that Mr. Robidoff, if I could ask you if this board is in agreement for you to pay Mr. Aswad a visit in the immediate future, i.e. tomorrow, and tell him that this board is aware of his noncompliance or of his, of his strict noncompliance in the, in the uh, scenario that compliance was supposed to be had, that this board is not pleased with that noncompliance, and that this board has every expectation that the, all of the conditions are going to be met by the, the last October date. And to the extent that he has any different understanding of compliance, that he let you know right then and you report back to this board. In other words, essentially pay him a visit and tell him the, what, what this board's concerns are and get, again, an assurance from him that, yeah, this order's been reversed, but everything is going to be done in post haste. Sure. Is that I mean, something this board could go along with? No. <laughs> Mr. Shea? Well, I was also one of the ones that had called Mark earlier today, yep. and I share a lot of the concerns that uh, Select and Kalinda have as well. I haven't had the honor of being at as many meetings as many of you here with mes Mr. Oswald. Uh, I have driven by myself on weekends, and again, I saw the most activity this Saturday on site with the crew that he had in there, you know, two days beyond the October 15th date. <clears throat> um, you know, it's, again, we met with him mid-August from then and now we've had, I think, three days of rain. There were very intense days of rain, but all in all, excellent weather for him to undertake the work that he should have undertaken. 
um, and, you know, where he has gone to the effort of implementing one of the later goals of doing the plantings earlier than his original schedule. Um, the paving is done as of right now? That yeah, the, the paving, paving was today. completed today. I, I was planning on giving the town administrator a report, and I was unable to do that because the paving just took place today. Okay. But um, And knowing that he's also taking the extra step that was not in the conditions and it was not discussed to do the seal coating of the entire site, which will be in a, a further improvement above that which was shown, uh, I would agree with Selectman Rooney's suggestion that we do visit him tomorrow and uh, I guess I would all, I don't think, again, with the, the other people that Mr. Aswad had here working with him and representing him, I'm surprised that, uh, and disappointed that some correspondence did not come back to this board prior to October 15th to at least give us an update on the status. Um, but if we can have that meeting with him tomorrow and get the assurance that the work will be complete, I could go along with that compromise, given the other things that he's done. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Glenda. So, uh, you know, and I, uh, I even, if I recall correctly, proffered the idea of he voluntarily turning in his license on 15 October if he didn't comply and I think town council was here at the time and and you know it, it, you know he didn't need to do that um, but clearly it was uh, you know it was my uh, concern that if he didn't do it that if he didn't comply then the next step is that it's it be rescinded that day you know so October 15th came passed he had plenty of time to do what he needed to do. In fact, if I recall correctly, we started out with an even earlier date. It may have been October 1st, um, uh, but we pushed those dates out further to give him extra time, to give him that cushion to, that he may have needed to get it done, uh, and he failed to do it. So I don't know why we would give him an extra week, 10 days, month, to do what we all agreed needed to be done by 15 October. Um, from my perspective, his license should be um, revoked. It should be minimally suspended. Um, you know, and, and he doesn't have a license to do what he needs to do, what he wants to do there because he failed to adhere to the time frames that we all agreed to. He's sitting right there. We all sat right here. We all agreed to it. it I, I mean, I don't, if we didn't mean it, we should have said, you know, do your best to get it done by that date. And, you know, if you don't, that's all right. You know, we'll give you more time. I don't we think didn't anybody's do that. saying that, Mr. Kalinda. But we, di we, we didn't do there that. There are other situations in this town that people go beyond the deadlines because of circumstances, and this town hall is aware of it. And corrective measures happen immediately when everyone gets together and comes up with a creative way to finish it. I agree with you. There's a license on the line here. But on the other hand, we're talking at best another five to seven days. And a license is going to be renewed in another six weeks, which runs the risk of not being renewed at all, period. Yeah, I mean, my, my guess is he's allowed to do this and keep the license while he's in violation. If he's no longer in violation, who would not renew it? All right, well, why don't we say the motion is, oh, our expectation is that he complies with this board's directive to the building inspector tomorrow that this be completed by X date. If not, he's back in here and he doesn't. But I, I, I will only say I believe that we did that okay. um, at our last meeting and the date has come and passed. Mr. Robodeau, if you wouldn't mind uh, visiting him tomorrow and then sending a follow-up memorandum to Mr. Purple as to the status of the discussions and also give us your uh, professional opinion and judgment as to his good faith effort thus far based upon what he's done and what you expect him to do in the next uh, few days. Um, and to the extent that he needs to be brought in as a result of that report, we can have him brought in at next meeting and just uh, for information, I am not gonna be at the next meeting. I'm gonna be on the West Coast. 
um, we can have a hearing on that date for noncompliance. Uh, but I don't want to do anything relative to license issuance, uh, license suspension, or license conditioning this evening, especially without, or in particular because it's not on the agenda. But let's get some more information. I understand your concern, uh, Select and Kalenda. Uh, I think to the extent that we get this memorandum and it does not, and, and the opinion of our building inspector is going to be very persuasive for me relative to his efforts at compliance and ability to comply. Don't get me wrong. There's no one who could have left the meeting we had with him with any confusion as to his responsibilities and dates for compliance. I agree with you 100%. And um, in fact, if I recall correctly, is, you know, unfortunately, uh, he, his eyes were closed for a long portion of that meeting, and, you know, and, uh, but I believe they were open when we all agree to those dates because he affirmatively, affirmatively agreed to those dates. And, you know, I, I, I guess my only other question is administratively, and then assume it, it looks like I'm, I may be standing here alone on this, but um, when, we, when we agree to those dates and we said what we did and he agreed to that and, um, uh, in, and now it doesn't happen, what is, who, who has the authority to suspend or revoke a license is it we do. this board? We do. This is license right, and, authority. Then that is that that is my recommendation. I'll, that if if I think it should be immediately suspended, and um, if he wants to continue to work with you or others to try to um, you know cure the defects, and we want to hear that, then you know we surely can. But I believe that it, since we all agreed to the dates. Um, he doesn't need to be here to, uh, because that discussion already took place, that we should uh, suspend the license um, until such time that we have an additional meeting or, or information from you through him um, as to whether or not he is going to cure the defects. Yeah, I'm not inclined to, to uh, even to the extent it's in my power, it may not even be in my power, to not allow a motion to suspend his license because of the lack of notification and due process issues. I do think he should be here for that type of a hearing. I'm not saying it's not necessarily inappropriate, but I don't think we should go down that road relative to a license suspension without him being here, without advance notice, and given the, the efforts that have been done, albeit not complete efforts. Um, but I, I would... Uh, I'd, I'd like just to close this issue up and wrap this issue up and, and ask Mr. Robodeau to do that, report back to the board, and then based upon that, we can, uh, I, I'll have a discussion, Mr. Perpo, with you and with council, and to the extent that uh, I, I'm certainly conscious of one member wanting to have a license revocation hearing, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll pass that, right. we'll cross that bridge after we get the report. Mr. Chairman, one other thing while Mr. Robito is standing at the podium, um, I just wanted to make sure the board is aware of Mr. Robito's, um, um, you know, I would say accomplishments, but his actions that he has taken with regards to this issue and with a number of other issues in town. Um, it is his approach, okay, to the issues that has gotten, quite frankly, Mr. Aswad to the point that that he has we you know you're you're more familiar and you've got much more history with this than I do and I understand it's not a great history okay but things are actually happening at that property now and I want you to understand that a lot of that is is due to the work um, you know that, that Mark has done um, you know with with the applicant with the license holder on this issue um, a lot of the things that are happening and the good things that are happening up at Clifford Street and uh, working with um, the, the, the uh, and I want to say developer, but you know the builder, uh, because it's not a developer, the builder up on those sites um, in response to some of the issues that the existing residents have. A lot of those things have been worked out um, fairly seamlessly and fairly quickly because of the relationship that Mr. Robito has established with a lot of the builders and, and, and developers in this town, okay? So, you know, a lot of things, I've, I've been here with two building inspectors. We couldn't get a whole lot of movement on this particular issue with this class two, with the tanks, with all these other issues. And, and we now are finally starting to see some movement. 
and I just wanted to at least have this board recognize that a lot of that movement is because of our building inspector. So I just wanted to publicly thank him for the work that he's, he's been doing on these and, and other issues and things that you don't see. Um, so, you know, thank well you. said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else in your report, Mr. Purple? I don't dare. Okay. <laughs> uh, consent agenda item number one. Approved minutes from September 22, 2015. Are there any issues on those? Second. Mr. Mr. Cimino had, I'm trying to find it. He had left, uh, there was one item that he had that he wanted, I'm sorry, one thing changed in the minutes on page two under public safety committee interviews. Uh -huh. um, let me just get to it. Second, uh, seventh line down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, he's, it, the, the seventh line should read, his concern is the perceived neutrality. So we wanted to put in the word perceived in front of neutral neutrality. Uh, one, one second, Mr. Purple. Sure. We are on page two. Page two, line seven, the line that begins, and an ex officio member, not a voting member. Yeah. Okay, he wants to change. His concern is the, and wants to insert the word perceived neutrality that the two firefighters can provide to the committee. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One abstention. Uh, call annual town meeting for April 11, 2016, an open warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Reappoint Jennifer P. Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N, to the Southboro Cultural Arts Council. Term to expire November 5, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Appoint Mary Silvestri. Reappoint. Oh, reappoint. Mary Silvestri Simmons. I believe it's Simmons, S-I-M-M-O-N-S, yes. to the Southboro Cultural Arts Council. Term to expire December 3, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved contract for the DPW engineering cons uh, consultant, Mr. Shea. I asked you beforehand if you would just take uh, the discussion on this issue. Yep. So again, this is the one of our previous meetings, Mark and Karen had requested permission to advertise to uh, the to engineering consultants to provide the assistance that was be needed in the DPW office because we were not able to fill the full-time position uh, that the depart uh, DPW that DPW has. Um, so this PAR Corporation has uh, proposed an individual with a couple years' experience. It's a Wentworth graduate. Uh, this individual has an engineer in training certification already, so uh, he's passed that examination. Is also a licensed soil evaluator. Uh, we, so this is a service that aligns with my line of work. Uh, I know that we have a number of Wentworth graduates in, in our firm as well. Uh, they are typically will provide interns to us, and more often than not, we retain those interns as full-time employees with the excellent level of education that they come to us with. Uh, the rate that has been proposed is, I believe, 83.75 per hour. That rate is comparable to uh, rates that I know that we have uh, from our firm for people with that level of education and experience, slightly less than another quote that we had received from uh, the engineering firm VHB. Uh, so I know we have not had success in hiring a full-time person to, uh, to come on board with the town, and I think this would be a great opportunity, as explained to us by Karen and Mark, uh, to have the services that are not being done by the full-time staff individual that we would have otherwise had on board uh, to start getting some of this work done um, and provides us a good opportunity to, to bring on board a 
skilled individual that also has the potential to tap into resources in a larger engineering firm should questions arise on some of the tasks that he is asked to undertake in the town. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Any questions on behalf of this board? Uh, just a follow up. I spoke with Karen earlier and you have an email from her on my question. Exhibit C will be changed to delete the word staff. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Uh, is there a motion? Uh, I move to approve the contract for DPW engineering consultant. Second. Can I add something? For a trial period of six months, which is stated in the letter. Mm -hmm. Is this so part if of you, the contract? Yeah. It? Yes. So if you, I, I think if you vote to approve it as presented, because it's approved it's, as a six-month contract, unless you want to put those words in there specifically. I would prefer to put the words in there. Okay. That's on Karen's cover letter. That's fine. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, other business properly before the board annual performance evaluation of town administrator. Um, it's always a uh, challenge to talk about somebody when that somebody is sitting directly next to you. Um, but I, I, in this instance, it's 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 an easy discussion insofar as. The uh, town administrator evaluation, the synthesis of the evaluation, which each member has in the packet and which the town has at their disposal. Um, it is an easy discussion insofar as Mark has performed um, above and beyond, I think, each member of this board's expectations in dealing with issues that come before him effectively, efficiently. Expeditiously, expeditiously, um, and um, the the words of his evaluation reflect that. Um, it's hard to synthesize in in, com in in comments all of the uh, information that was in the report, other than to say that I'm confident in saying that each member of this board appreciates. Um, and tremendously values the work, not that you just do nine to five, Monday through Friday, but the work you do while you're on vacation, while you're with your family, while you're uh, on weekends, at nights. Um, if I send a text at 11.30 p.m., I get a response at 11.35 p.m. And the only reason it's taken five minutes is because there's a lot in the text that has to be texted and, and written. So, um, the the you know when we decided to hire you, Mark, we had certain expectations, and I, I know at least those members of this board that were, were boards that were involved in the hiring process um, are convinced that we made the right decision, and nothing in your performance from the date of your hire to the present. Uh, gives me any uh, concern or reason to doubt the decisions that we made in bringing you on board. Um, Selectman Samino has asked me to read uh, into the record a comment about the purple evaluation discussion. Quote, as is apparent from the strong collective evaluation Mr. Purple has received from the board tonight, I want to reiterate publicly my great appreciation for the professionalism and substance that Mr. Purple brings to our town in his role as town administrator, as well as my strong support for his continued excellent service to our town. Like so many others who serve our town so ably, his often thankless job, his is often a thankless job, but I know and acknowledge the enthusiasm that he nevertheless brings to it. I obviously did not say it in, in the passionate tone that it was written, but I think you can garner from that that Mr. Semino is, is also pleased with your performance. So if any member of the board has anything to offer. Just Mr. 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 You've, you said it incredibly well, as did Mr. Semino. Um, I recall when you were here in front of us, Mr. Purple, um, uh, looking for this job and we looking for 
someone exactly like you, and 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 uh, and I am continue to be incredibly impressed by uh, uh, your service to the town. You are both, uh, I say, incredibly professional uh, and also personable, and those are characteristics that you don't often see together. And so, you know, it, as was stated, um, incredibly well done, and uh, this town. You know, has, has benefited significantly from your service to it, and I thank you for it. Thank you. Um, earlier this evening, we talked about the Board of Selectmen's goals. In order for us to meet our goals, we uh, need the assistance of the town administrator, Mark, and I'm sure we're going to meet them. And he's always made himself available to me, and as far as I know, to every community member when necessary. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And again, this is just my first go around is uh, with the review at this level uh, but also well experienced with Mark and his involvement with attendance at a number of advisory committee meetings over the past number of years as well so uh, I know with, when I was on that committee I certainly did appreciate the number of meetings that you took uh, time away from your family and evenings to attend those meetings which would tend to go a little bit later than what the Board of Selectmen's meetings even go. And, um, appreciate all you're doing, and so far I'm very happy with the way things are going here at this level as well. Thank you. One thing uh, before I forget, um, we need um, two selectmen, I'm going to recommend two selectmen, sit down with Mark to um, compose what Mark's goals are. We've told him what our goals are, and. Uh, I think if you look at the back of the evaluation, there's a, peri there's, a, there's a portion there for a discussion of Mark's goals, in other words, what his goals are going to be for the coming year, so that when we look back uh, on the year he had to see how he satisfied those goals. So I would like two selectmen to sit down with Mark and just go over and identify what those goals are and then report back to the board. Are there any volunteers? Because if there's no volunteers, I'll make I'll the one point. I'll volunteer Mr. Semino since he's not here. You're volunteering, Mr. Semino, since he's not here. <laughs> Mr. I volunteer Kalenda. myself. I am Mr. here. Mr. Kalenda. Okay. Do you have anything to add to that? I mean, do you want to talk about yourself at all, or are you going to let the, the, the document speak for itself? No, I just want to, first of all, I just want to thank the board um, very much for, for the evaluation um, and, and for, the, for, the, for the nice words. It's, it's, been a, um, it's been a good year. It's been a different year. Um, you know, every year is different in terms of the issues and, and the things that you face. Um, I will say what makes it easier um, is that, um, and, and as you've come to know me by now, I don't like to talk about myself, I like to talk about others. Um, we have a great team, okay? I, I enjoy coming to work um, because I enjoy the people that I work with. I enjoy the, the management team that we've put together. I enjoy the people that, that work in these departments um, and I enjoy the passion with which um, you know, they, uh, they do their jobs, uh, and, uh, and they serve the residents of this town and, uh, the residents of this commonwealth. Um, and, uh, you know, I enjoy this board. I think, you know, we have a good board now. Um, I think every, we have a great board. Everybody, but, but yeah, I, well, it, you know, and everybody, everybody cares and everyone cares in a different way. Um, but at the end of the day, as with town meeting, um, you know, this board gets it right. You know, the board does the right thing. Um, and, uh, and I think we've got a lot of big things in front of us. Um, the job continues to be interesting. Um, the job continues to always be evolving. And, um, and uh, you know, I look forward to, uh, you know, continuing to, uh, you know, make some of these improvements and, and leave, you know, some of these legacy pieces, you know, that we are working on now, which really are going to define, you know, our community, you know, for, for generations to come. So um, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, you know what, this board never really gets its own evaluation other than, I guess, at election time when you can talk, you can say that that's the evaluation. But if you take a look at some of the other communities and some of the other towns and, and, and see what their boards are doing and how their boards are struggling and how their boards are having difficulty communicating, I think as a unit overall, we do a pretty good job. And, and I, I'm sure I'll be subject to criticism for this, but I, I'm honored to serve with these four members that are seated to my left uh, every night um, when we come, or every Tuesday when we come here. We, uh, we, we try to work as hard as we can to get do the right thing. We don't always do the right thing, but we 
can certainly tell you that we always try to do the right thing. And uh, if we disagree with each other, we disagree with each other on a professional basis and we just move on from there. So again, it's an honor and a privilege to serve with, with all these, these four members and Mr. Purple, you complete the team and uh, we're, we're on to another budget season, which is always one of my favorite times of year. So um, that said, um, is there anything else that we need to discuss before we enter into executive session? Just a quick note. Yes. There will be a public hearing with MassDOT at Cotterville Hall on Tuesday, October 27th at 7 p.m. and it's in regards to the resurfacing and related work on Route 9. Thank you. So please attend. Uh, with that, uh, the board, uh, I would move that this board enter into executive session pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 2-1, and not return to open session. The issue to be discussed is, the collective, is a collective bargaining issue regarding the police union, which falls under exemption number two. This requires a roll call vote. Rooney, aye. Helinda, aye. Banif, aye. Shea, aye. The board is now in executive session and we will not be returning, as I mentioned, to open session. Good night.